Hello, my name is Corrine April Yolanda Khan, and I work in the National Human Genome Research Institute in the Social and Behavioral Research Branch. Resilience. So this is a quality that everyone has to some degree, even if it's a concept that isn't very well understood. The definition of resilience is debated across every discipline that studies it, but what's undeniable in the literature is that it's associated with both physical and mental health outcomes. So we're interested in the relationship that psychological resilience has on the health outcomes of adults living with sickle cell disease. We're also interested in what contributes to that psychological resilience. Now, for those of you who don't know, sickle cell disease is a genetic disorder that affects your red blood cells. The sickling cells create a lifetime of chronic pain, organ damage, and essentially shorten the lifespan of people living with this condition. It's a holistic issue. So what better disease than to study the effects of psychological resilience on disease severity? So in our study, we capture psychological resilience with this measure called the Brief Resiliency Scale. It's a validated measure that defines resilience as the ability to bounce back after stress. There are six questions in it, some of which are like, I bounce back quickly after stress, I push through hard times easily, and I don't snap back after challenges. All in all, we have a score from this scale for every single participant in our study. We also have demographic data, clinical data, lab data, as well as 400 plus questions on each of their psychosocial and environmental well-being. So what we've done is we've taken all of this data and run correlations to see what's most associated with psychological resilience. To date, we haven't found anything that significantly relates psychological resilience to physical health outcomes, but we have found that it's significantly associated with better mental health. So people with higher resilience have less depression, they report less stress, better social relationships, and a better religious identity within themselves. Now we're also interested in the people who are most resilient and least resilient in our cohort. So we've taken our data, quartiled it, and taken the highest and lowest quartile for further examination. That data has to still be an analyzed, but what we're hoping to do moving forward is bring this question to our participants directly. We're going to ask people who are in the highest and lowest quartile how they feel about their resilience, what they think contributes to it, so that we can better understand the nuances of this concept, all in the hopes that we can create interventions that eventually help someone increase their resilience better their quality of life, regardless of whatever they're going through.